Nicholas Nick Dunn is a nonchalant man in his 40s who has been married to a beautiful wife named Amy. Today is the fifth anniversary of their wedding, but unlike other husbands, Nick seems to be quite off. It's evident that he has lost interest in his wife. Instead of buying a gift for her, he heads to the bar to have some drinks. The bartender is none other than his twin sister, Margot. She notices Nick's hung up face and inquires about the reason. He simply says, Amy, and the movie goes into a flashback to the night they met. Amy, a popular children's writer, had organized a book launch event, and Nick was among the several attendees. The two met coincidentally and started conversing about their shared interest in books. Nick was a writer himself, but only for a small men's magazine, while Amy was adored by millions. Soon they went outside and wandered around the alleys of New York City. Nick had used his charm and good looks to impress Amy, and at an opportune moment, he kissed her. In the present, as Nick continues explaining his story, he suddenly gets a call from his neighbor, saying that his cat is outside. Nick hurries home and retrieves the cat. Strangely, the front door is open. Nick calls out for Amy, but she does not respond. So, he searches around the house until he comes across a shattered glass table. This surprises Nick, so he immediately calls for help. Shortly after, Detective Rhonda arrives at the scene with her assistant and quickly gets to work. She scans through the house and finds a few droplets of blood in unusual places. Then, she observes Amy's room and comes across her books. Realizing that she is a famous writer, Detective Rhonda starts treating her disappearance as a high-profile case. Later, all of them arrive at the police station, and Nick is asked to go through a few tests. Once he's done, Detective Rhonda assures him that they will find Amy. Her credit cards are being tracked, a forensics team is already on the crime scene to check for clues, and, most importantly, a press conference will be held tomorrow to appeal for help. Strangely, Nick Nick finds all of this funny, and he even compares it to the show Law and Order. This is the first red flag for Detective Rhonda, so she starts asking him questions. However, Nick can't answer many of them, like he doesn't know Amy's blood type, her favorite food, or even her nickname. All Nick knows is that Amy had no friends, and she spent most of her time reading books. Following this, we are again taken to a flashback. It is the first anniversary of Nick and Amy's marriage, and they are living happily. They often have coitus in public places and gift each other with expensive items. But little did they know that their lives are only going downhill from this point onwards. Back in the present, as Detective Rhonda is looking for clues at the crime scene, a pregnant woman named Noelle shows up, claiming to be Amy's best friend. She reveals that she lives just three blocks away and has been in close proximity with Amy for over a year. This makes Rhonda suspicious, as previously, Nick mentioned that his wife didn't have any friends. Nonetheless, she decides to interrogate Noelle later and sends her away. Following this, she enters the Dunn residence and learns from the forensic team that the kitchen floor was splattered with blood, which was then later cleaned. Furthermore, it is revealed that the entire house is registered in Amy's name. The next day, the scheduled press conference takes place. Since Amy is a popular writer, hundreds of reporters have arrived, and the whole thing is being broadcasted live on television. Nick and his in-laws are set to take over the press conference. When it's Nick's turn, he reluctantly utters two sentences and even puts on a smile for a photograph. That night, he heads to his father's abandoned house to relax. Just then, Detective Rhonda arrives, and it turns out that she was following him. This enrages Nick, so he quickly escorts her out of the house before departing in his car. Next, another flashback is shown, where the couple has started going through a rough patch. Now, Amy records everything in her diary. The couple has shifted to Nick's hometown in Missouri to look after his terminally ill mother. It has already been a few months, but Nick has yet to find a job. This forces Amy to borrow money from her wealthy parents. Things are running on a very tight budget, but Nick, who is not used to being unemployed, recklessly spends money on video games. Amy tries to encourage him that better days will come, but it appears as if all their conversations result in arguments. In the present, it has been two days since Amy's disappearance. Her parents have organized an event to attract more helping hands and are doing everything to find their daughter. Nick, however, is nonchalant, as always. He even clicks a few selfies with the attendees. That night, Nick decides to stay at his sister Margot's place to avoid the swarm of paparazzi that have been encircling him. Unfortunately, even there, he has no respite. On the television, Margot sees several news channels reporting about Nick's carefree attitude. Some even question if he is sad at all. So, Margot confronts her brother about the same thing, and Nick angrily replies that he wasn't expecting this from her. The past two days have been a nightmare for him, so he just wants a good night's sleep without being judged. Hearing this, Margot apologizes and goes to sleep. 
After a few hours, surprisingly, a young girl enters the house and jumps into Nick's arms. She is revealed to be his girlfriend, Andy. This apparently clarifies everything. Nick doesn't care about his wife's disappearance because he is in love with someone else. But that leaves the big question, is he responsible for it? Meanwhile, the two get physical and spend the night together. Unfortunately, the next morning, Margot catches her brother in the act and chastises him for hiding things from her. But Nick quickly retaliates by explaining how miserable Amy made him feel. At one point, she stopped caring for him, and spending even a single day had become difficult. That's why he had to find solace in someone else, and that someone turned out to be one of his students, Andy. Shocked, Margot warns her brother that if the authorities find out about this, he is in trouble. She also shows Nick that he is all over the news, but for the wrong reasons. In another flashback, through Amy's diary, it is shown that she wanted to have a child with Nick, hoping it would solve their ongoing problems. However, Nick was completely completely against the idea. In a resulting argument, he pushed her to the floor, accidentally hurting her. Although Nick apologized profusely for it, Amy had reached her breaking point, and from that day onwards, she started fearing for her life and wanted a divorce. However, she knew that Nick wouldn't leave her, as he wanted her parents' money. In the present, Detective Rhonda gets the forensics report of the blood samples around the house. It belongs to none other than Amy. At night, Nick is asked to give another speech to a mass of people, but just then, Amy's supposed best friend Noel pops up and screams that he is hiding things. After she has the crowd's attention, she reveals that Amy was actually six weeks pregnant at the time of her disappearance. Hearing this, Margot, Andy, Abby's parents, everyone is shocked. The crowd also turns against Nick, but fortunately, he is escorted away by the police. That night, as Nick is drinking at home, Detective Rhonda confronts him with a set of photographs, which show that Amy and Noel were indeed good friends. She also tells him that the blood inside the kitchen belongs to his wife. Life. Finally, Detective Rhonda comes to the conclusion that Amy was murdered. She only needs the dead body to confirm her theory and put Nick behind bars. After she is gone, Margot approaches her distressed brother and asks him about Amy's pregnancy. Surprisingly, Nick reveals that he never knew about it. In fact, Amy never wanted to have a baby. At the same time, Detective Rhonda reaches Nick's father's house to look for clues. She does not find a body, but she finds Amy's half-burnt diary in the furnace. Following this, we are taken to the day of the disappearance. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that Amy herself is the perpetrator of the entire incident. Everything that is pointing towards her husband's arrest was meticulously planned by her. In Amy's eyes, Nick took her soul by lying to her, cheating on her, and taking away her pride and money. We are then shown how she staged the whole thing. At first, she secretly befriended the dumbest neighbor in the area and invited her home. Knowing that Noelle was pregnant, Amy cunningly stole her urine sample and took it to a local hospital to create fake medical records. She also filled Noelle's mind with lies about how Nick beats her up every night. As for the crime scene, Amy drew two bags of blood from her hand and splattered it across the kitchen floor. She then swept it carelessly so that the police could find traces of it. Finally, Amy wrote fake stories in her diary and left it for the cops. This means that Nick never assaulted her. In fact, she was the aggressive one. As Amy drives away in her car, she reveals that she started planning the night she saw Nick cheating on her. Elsewhere, Nick has also become sure that his wife is trying to frame him, but since he has no proof, he decides to visit Tanner, the smartest lawyer in the country. Tanner immediately showcases his quick thinking skills by advising Nick on a few things. If he wants to win the case, firstly, he has to make sure the country is on his side. For that, he has to defame Amy. Tanner says that the first step would be to find someone she screwed over in the past and get a testimony from them. Nick knows just the perfect guy. Before him, Amy was in a relationship with Desi Collings, a rich guy from New York. The two were a perfect match because of their high standards, but soon, Desi became possessive. This resulted in their breakup, and when Desi still didn't stop pursuing Amy, she had to file a restraining order against him. But to this day, he still writes letters to her. Nick uses the address from one of these letters and visits his mansion, but unfortunately, Desi doesn't want to speak badly about the love of his life. Despite Despite everything that Amy has done to him, he still wants to defend her. On the other hand, Amy has completely changed her identity and is now living in a small neighborhood. She mostly minds her own business and tries to stay away from everyone around. However, one day, she accidentally drops her thick wad of money, which a few of her neighbors notice. That night, she is attacked by the same people who beat her up and take the money away. The only good thing is that they didn't realize she is the gone girl from the news. But 
Amy doesn't want to take the chance, so she packs her belongings and leaves the place. She doesn't have a place to stay, so she calls the only person who loves her unconditionally, Desi Collings. In the next scene, the two meet in a casino, and Amy quickly starts manipulating him. She lies that she was forced to run away from her home, as Nick was about to kill her. Now, she cannot return, as the entire nation will perceive her as a coward. Desi immediately buys her story, and takes this as the perfect opportunity to reconcile with her. Hence, he escorts Amy to his private villa, which lies in the middle of nowhere. There are cameras around the entire place, so Amy won't have to worry about being discovered. Elsewhere, after the first plan fails, Tanner tells Nick to go live on television and confess about his illicit affair. This will gain him a lot of sympathy, as everyone likes an honest man. Unfortunately, on the interview day, they get a major shock. Nick's girlfriend Andy breaks the news herself. This leaves Nick in a perilous position. Tanner explains that now they are on the back foot, so going live on television would be a death wish. However, Nick reassures him that he can handle it. Then he goes on the interview set, puts on a serious face, and delivers an emotional confession. Although many believe that he is faking it, Amy, who is watching from the villa, is impressed. She is especially touched when Nick mentions, I will love my wife forever. Now, 21 days after her disappearance, which has caused a nationwide uproar, Amy is thinking of returning back to her husband. However, there is one problem. Desi is really expecting her to be his wife. He has even left his personal life and isolated himself in the villa with her. Amy knows that if she tries to leave, he will become violent and do something drastic. Hence, she decides to kill two birds with one stone. At first, she goes inside the bathroom, the only place that there are no cameras. Then, she leaves rope marks on her wrists to make it look like she had been tied up. For the second step, she scars her private organs and goes near one of the cameras to record herself screaming. Later, when Desi arrives home, she seduces him to make out with her. As he is distracted, Amy finishes him off brutally. Elsewhere, things are looking grim for Nick, as Detective Rhonda has gone through the entire diary and is on the verge of arresting him. But one morning, everything changes. Amy arrives outside the house, still covered in Desi's blood. This changes the whole complexion of the case. Nick, who was America's most hated man a while ago, is now innocent. In the evening, the doctors examine Amy and conclude that she was mistreated. Nick knows that she is once again deceiving everyone, but he has no evidence to prove it. Later, in front of a number of officials, Amy tells her BS story. She explains how her possessive boyfriend Desi kidnapped her and held her hostage for several weeks. The news goes viral and once again, Amy becomes the sweetheart of America. Except for Nick and his sister Margot, everyone believes her sob story. In the final scene, the couple returns back to their home and the drama is over. In Nick's eyes, Amy is a murderer, but the latter explains that she did everything to get back to him. However, with everything that has happened, Nick is afraid to live with her. He tells her that he's leaving, but Amy threatens to ruin his life if he even considers doing so. Hearing this, Nick realizes that he is trapped with this lunatic forever. The movie ends as he puts Amy to sleep and locks the door from outside, indicating that he doesn't feel safe in his house anymore.